All right. Um, this is the last talk of the day. And so it's basically me, and then there will be a keynote. Um, welcome, everyone. Welcome for um, the session to the session uh, where we're going to be talking about regular expressions. It's kind of not a typical thing uh, to talk. I mean, this is not a typical thing that I normally talk about, but I have like a couple of talks usually where I explain like complicated stuff in a little bit simplified way, and this is one of them. So uh, some of those things that we're going to say might you might know, and some of those things might be a little bit new, and I'll show you some other examples to, s to see how things work uh, together. And uh, you're more than welcome to interrupt me, ask questions, comment, or anything during the talk, and we'll try to get some time at the end of the, uh, of the presentation as well to do that. Um, this is the topic that I submitted to the conference, but I think the most, uh, the, 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 the uh, bit more, a little bit more descriptive topic of the, uh, the, this talk might be this. So it's more like explaining the language, the language itself, the regular expressions, and making sure that everybody uh, is able actually to, to, to speak that language or to understand that language. So hands up, who of you guys have actually ever written any regular expressions at all? Yeah, that's that's like 90 plus 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 99 percent of everyone here, right? How many of you are actually able to sit down and write a regular expression just like to match some kind of random thing uh, right here without googling it? <laughs> My point exactly, right? So uh, the idea is that. Um, well, then I'll get to that later uh, in a bit. Uh, the idea is to actually get you from that level where we're all now to another level where we actually will be able to like, hey, oh, well, yeah, I know that. I heard about that. Okay, let's let's try that. Let's do that. So, okay, let's get started. Um, this is my first time I'm doing talk in Ukraine, so I have no idea how the crowd is and how the people react and everything. I am normally do most of my talks in in in, in Norway where I live and. Uh, uh, in Norway, we're really, really, really good at giving feedback. So uh, this is how I usually read people. This is how people, uh, this is what I'm used to. So please kind of try to prove me wrong. I mean, it's like you don't really get any feedback. Or well, no, we're, we're really good at doing feedback, right? Um, this is also something about giving feedback. This is uh, this thing on top that means like it's good. This is kind of just just to just to explain you what I'm used to, and please don't do that. Uh, <coughs> and this is a typical Norwegian bus, and it's actually not a not a joke. I actually another d uh, the other day I was going to work, and I was just one second before taking the picture was exactly like this. Um, yeah, very social people, right? We are very social people, but it's you know, um, okay. So this is me. Uh, my name is Rustam. I work as a consultant uh, in a, a consultancy company in, in Oslo. I've been working with kind of development and all those kind of things, mostly with Java, most of the time for the last 10 plus 11 years. Uh, I have. Uh, I'm doing a lot of courses uh, and some talks and stuff like that. I do a lot of uh, conferences th throughout the year because I think it's fun. It's not part of my job, but I think it's fun, so I do that. And also, I had been leading Norwegian Java user group for a couple of years, and uh, now I took over the leadership of the uh, tiny little conference called Java Zone. It's about like 3,000 people <coughs> in Oslo. Uh, so uh, this is what I'm doing right now. Um, yeah, that's about me. And this is uh, the slide I had a couple of seconds earlier, a couple of minutes earlier, and this is kind of the vision. This is where we want to be at the end of this talk. So let's see if we get there and how we get there, right? Because the idea is that many of us really think that um, uh, um, um, regular expressions are the solution to everything and the, 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 the meaning of life and you know all the other things, right? <sighs> but not always, right? Usually you end up like, oh, I'm going to solve that. And then you have, I'm going to solve that problem. Then you have two problems. One of them is the original problem. The second one is actually debugging your regular expression. Um, and then you have this. 
this is, by the way, really, I, I really love this, uh, uh, the, the comic uh, XKCD, I don't know, you've probably have seen that before, but this is, this is fantastic, right? This is how you, you end up with like backslash uh, hell. And um, this one is also, this is like the, the, the mouse over text for the same comic. Um, this is how usually we end up. I mean, you, you usually you find some kind of uh, regular expression. You have no clue whatsoever what it was, but back then it was a really good idea, right? Okay. This is this this is the reality, right? And the reality is that we always try to do like the we know it's like oh I know I know oh, I'm gonna solve it in like really nice way I'm gonna solve it in a really uh, easy way I'm gonna like I, I know regular expressions everybody stand back right the, the previous slide so this is actually a real code that I got it from a colleague of mine uh, doesn't don't mind the language I mean it's it's not Java uh, but it's very close and we will understand it I'm pretty sure uh, so. That's actually live code that was running in a system he was working on, a colleague of mine. Um, yeah, well, the method called validate email, right? You take in an email, um, you take in a, a model, you do something, some stuff with it, you validate the, uh, the email, and then you should get like an answer, true or false, if it's an email or not, right? So the first attempt, what I did actually, I, I, I'm going to show it to you line by line, the method. I uh, just kind of trying to make it a bit more dramatic. So I'm like showing you one, one by line, the evolution of that method. So it started with this, right? And then there is a, some more magic was supposed to happen there. Uh, and then you have return true false, right? Mm -hmm. Perfect. So what happened was, didn't work. So we do the second attempt because, well, that wasn't really fancy enough. I was like, oh, well, we have some text, we have an at, and we have some more text, and we have some blah. Um, well, that didn't work. So, okay, fine. Let's, let's try something else. Let's try a bit more complicated way. Um, can you guess what happened? Anyone? It didn't work. Uh, so it got commented. Can you actually guess what line was actually running in that method? Anyone? Come on, I, it's as bad as you think. <laughs> right? So this is, this is where we usually end up. We're like, okay, regular experience, cool, yeah, I'm going to do that. Well, it didn't work. Okay, I'll try another. Oh, it didn't work. Okay, I have no time for that. Return true. This is actually <laughs> live code that was running some, at some system somewhere out there. Um, well, yeah. So this is the reality, and this is what we're kind of trying to, to get rid of now. Um, I'm going to use a couple of tools that are really, really nice. Uh, there is like a one tool called RegExpal, which uh, does like lots of matching and visualization and stuff like that. And there is another one called RegExpur, which is a very nice kind of uh, drawing this kind of train diagram inspired things to explain regular expres expressions like you see here. So this is kind of things you draw with that. Fantastic in explaining regular expressions. So we'll see that in a bit. Um, so regular expressions, right? Uh, just ignore what it does for now. I mean, just and ignore the syntax and everything. We'll get back there. What is being used normally? I mean, it's a very powerful thing. It's implemented in most of the languages. Well, obviously in Java or any other language, Python, Perl, whatever. It's all started with. Uh, uh, with one language, and then it was like most of the things were like implemented usually in like older languages, and then everything was re implemented. You have it in .NET, you have it in Java, you have to, well, anywhere, right? It's a very powerful thing. It's usually used to find something, or it's used to find something and replace with something else, right? This is, this is very nice. There is a lot of things you can do with the regular expression. There is a guy who wrote actually a uh, uh, I think it was like a, almost like, what was that? Was it a, a compiler or was it, a, I think it was like a Turing complete, um, uh, like the whole thing. I mean, you can run the whole thing. as a, It's, it's a basically a huge regular expression. You can run the whole thing and the way you run it, you do it, you open Notepad++, you uh, paste that thing in, click, 
run and then it does lots of magic things and it's basically Turing complete. So it's it's very powerful thing, but it may, can be very 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 messy. Um, to show some examples to 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 match something, I took a uh, real life log4j example from a system. I changed some class names to make it more uh, kind of uh, not obvious where it was taken from because it was from one of the systems. And I changed some IP addresses and stuff, but it's like it looks kind of like this. And what we're going to use it to match our stuff to to see how things work, right? Um, if we start with something simple, we start with just like. Um, very very simple thing. You just say like, okay, we're gonna have something. Uh, uh, we're gonna have something. Uh, we're gonna have uh, any character. So it can be zero. It can be uh, as many as you want of those things. So the dot says anything. Star says zero or more. And then there is something in those parentheses. And those parentheses, you're basically saying they should be either i followed by n, by followed by f, by followed by o or it should be W followed by A, or so, so on, so on, so on, right? And then, after you match those w one of those words, if there are any, uh, you, there will be anything again. So it's pretty easy, right? So uh, it looks like this, right? Any character, as many times as you want, because you see the, the, the train kind of diagram thing, so it might just pass because it's there, is, there are none, or it might get in there and just go around and round and round until it starts uh, seeing one of these letters. And if there are those letters, it will check for another letter, for another letter, and for another letter, and so on. And then it will do exactly the same thing afterwards. So think of it as like train tracks. And try make sure that you're not on those tracks. So that's, uh, that's another thing. So if you put that thing on, on our log file, it will look like this, right? Makes sense. Because we're we're looking for anything that has anything in the front, it has warn or info, and anything in the back. Those lines they have like error and stuff. We don't want that. Fair enough, right? Cool. Okay. Um, let's look at another one. Uh, this is uh, kind of the same thing. We want to match uh, just errors, and we we do a little bit more complicated stuff. We just say like, okay, they're going to be. Um, we have uh, those parentheses you can ignore for a little while. We'll go get back to those later. But basically, we're saying that there should be uh, zero, any character, any number between zero and nine. It will be four times. Those curly brackets says that it's going to be four times. Then there's going to be dash. There will be two more numbers. <sighs> then they're going to be in dash. There will be two more numbers, right? Pretty basic. Again, it's very, very basic kind of uh, things. And then we have any kind of text followed by word error. Well, actually, not the word error, but letters, E-R-R-O-R, -R -R. Uh, and then anything, right? Because regular expressions, they don't know words. They take one character at a time, and then they check. It's a very, very good thing to remember, because it's when you forget that, things get complicated. OK, fine. So basically, you have one of the characters between 0 and 9, then goes four times, and then there is a dash, and so twice, and so on, so on, so on, right? Makes sense. OK. If we match that, it works. That's cool, right? This is, this is very basic stuff. But here we can see also uh, some st stuff. We can see here uh, character classes that are, are in those uh, square brackets. So like this 0 to 9. This is basically you're saying you, we have a character class. We have those characters of, those t of that type. And then you have the multipliers that are in the curly brackets saying that we'll have them four times, two times, whatever times, right? And then we have um, uh, groups, those are those parentheses around it that I said that ignore it for a while, and then we'll look into groups more. But then basically it's a way of logically separating stuff and uh, getting stuff uh, into, uh, into different variables and stuff like that. We'll get back into that. Uh, we'll look into that in a little bit. Let's look at something a bit more, uh, I, I want to say simple, but it's kind of not. But well, for now, it's simple. We want to match IP addresses, right? OK. Um, we start with uh, some, some thing like that. And uh, the, the, the thing that is worth noting is that we have this kind of little hat character there 
but we have it also, we have one in the beginning, and we have one at the, in the middle. And they have two different ro uh, roles. So they do actually two different things, and those things are also kind of compu uh, confusing. Uh, I, uh, as you've already seen, uh, parentheses have different roles. We'll get back again, I'll repeat that later on. So those hat things have different roles, and things, de uh, depending on where they are in, 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 in the expression, they will have actually different roles. Very, very good thing to keep in mind. Uh, so, basically we're saying like the hat, which says it's the start of the line, and the dollar that says it should be end of the line, and then you have any character, one, nine, two, uh, a dot, and dot is backslashed because uh, dot means something else in regular expressions, right? Because otherwise it would actually mean any character. We, we don't want to do that. We backslash it. And there will be one, six, eight, and so on, blah, 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 and then you get to dot six, and then comes the square brackets again. And uh, they have this kind of character class role. And what they say here is not nine. So this is now the, the hat thing is a uh, negation. So you basically say, well, anything but nine. And then you have uh, anything and end of the line, right? That's how it looks. OK, um, cool. Uh, let's see how it will be. Uh, if we wouldn't have backslashed that. It's kind of the same. It's almost the same if we go back and forward. It's almost the same thing. The only thing is that we're not backslashing the dots. It will work. It will work in exactly the same way like the previous one, but it will match much more because if you have 192716818, uh, I don't know, uh, 3076, Six, it will match that. It will be actually fine. And also, um, uh, that is also a very important thing to remember because if you usually think, when you write regular expressions, you usually think what you want to match. The thing you actually don't think about is uh, usu usually is what you don't want to match. And this is a very important thing. Because you're like, oh, well, you know, IP, it's like number dot number dot number, V4, right? Number dot number dot number dot number, blah. <sighs> and then you write something like this, and it works, and you're, oh, cool. And then you put that in the code and run it on a big data set, and things starting look weird. And then you're like, what happened, you know? Think what you don't want to match. Do you really want it to match everything and all these kind of long numbers and stuff? Maybe not. See? Now it's any character. If we go back again, here it was uh, actually dots here, right? 192.168 with backslashes. Without backslashes, it is like this. It says 192 any character 168 and so on. Good thing to remember. Very obvious thing, but very easy to forget. So, uh, if we go back to this, um, there is a small problem with that. The last digit, if you have like three digit uh, IP, it will not actually be part of that thing. Well, actually, actually, it's, well, there is a bug there. Do you see the bug? You, know, you see what will happen with the last digit of the three? If, if the last group has three digits, what will happen with it? Yeah. No, no, no. It, it will work, but it will be like six, seven. Well, it will be obviously out of range, but, like in, uh, but, but regular expressions, they don't know that, right? So there will be, I mean, say if you have your crazy IP system, which has six, six, seven. It will actually match that as well, but the problem is that the 7 will actually end up inside there. And you also don't want that. And this is, this is kind of weird, but that is actually a very good observation. And we will look into that and putting all that kind of logic into uh, IP matching in, uh, in a little while. Actually, at the end of the talk, we'll do that. Okay, so when we can, we can do something like uh, this instead. So we'll be 6. Uh, any character between 0 and 9, at least 1, and then you put uh, hat 9 there, so then, then it will actually work. Well, it will be legal IP, yes, but 
if we want to match this pattern of three numbers, it will work, right? And actually, there is also another bug that might... Um, I think that will actually even match 9, but the 9 will end up in here. That's another bug in there, and that's, that's the one I did not realize when I was writing that. And then, like, later on, I was like, wait a second. And then I tested it, and it actually did that. So it's, again, very easy to, to, to oversee things like that. Um, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about uh, 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 the optional kind of character. So the question mark is another th kind of reserved thing in regular expression. It's another thing that has different meanings in different places inside the regular expression. So uh, in this case, it's basically a uh, kind of sidetrack. You can say, I want flavor. Maybe there will be you there. Maybe it will not. I want you to match both of them, right? There is another use of that. There is another use in groups and stuff. We'll look in that, into that in a bit. So if you look at the quantifiers, those we have seen till now, uh, zero or many, right? One or many, at least one or more, uh, maybe, right? Zero, yeah, basically zero, one. But it's kind of maybe, but yes, that's ma zero, one, exactly, perfect. Uh, actually, that one you can replace, by the way, with the curly brackets, one, uh, comma. So this instead of question, bec because basically it is zero or one. Um, curly brackets and curly brackets number number. So it's like uh, the minimum and the maximum number of those. Um, so the, 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 the plus you can replace with comma, uh, one comma because it's at least one, but you don't specify the maximum number of, uh, of uh, characters. OK. Grouping. You can do groups like uh, this. Uh, you can define groups, and you can refer to them later. Uh, you can do also, uh, th th this is a group, just, just, just to make sure. This is a group. This is something else. This is another use of parentheses. This is for uh, class. Uh, you can say something or something, right? This is another kind of uh, use of group, but this is uh, a group without a name. So you're basically telling to a, uh, the regular expression compiler machine saying that, hey, I'm going to create a, this group. It's just for my own convenience. I want just to put things in like different chunks. But you don't have to spend memory and resources remembering the, the position of that thing. You can just, 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 just keep it for me there, and I'll be fine, right? Um, by the way, question mark, again, we'll look at different uses of that, because we've seen one, which was like optional thing. Two, when you, where you say like the group names and stuff, and then there will be a third one uh, with the greed and stuff. We'll, we'll, uh, that will come in a bit. Let's look into something else. Uh, the normal regular expression matching, how it works. So as I told you, it basically think of it as a Pac-Man that goes and eats one dot by eat, uh, one by one dot, and uh, just eats through the text and then just goes like, okay, do I find this? Do I find this? Do I find? Oh, I didn't find. Okay, go back and then try to eat next line and so on, right? But you can also introduce things like positive look aheads. Uh, if you don't want it to do, you say that, look, I don't want you to uh, match WA if it's not worn there. If it says some other kind of thing, for example, war file or something, I don't want you to match that. Because you might, for example, want to use regular expression to replace worn with warning or whatever, I don't know, to replace a name with your uh, username or whatever, you know, those kind of usual us usages of that. Uh, but the thing is that it's, again, you know what you want to match, but you also know what you should not match. And in this case, you should not match anything that is not worn. And then you add a positive look ahead that will kind of check. It will kind of run before, uh, the, li uh, the, before the character it, r it reads and check if, those uh, if, the, if, the, if the characters afterwards are RN or not. 
This is another use of question mark, by the way, right? So you have those all those kind of special characters in regular expressions that have totally different meanings and usages depending on where they are and what they're followed with or by or before them on so on and things like that, right? So look at how uh, look around. There is positive, negative, look ahead and look behind. So they're kind of they're self-explanatory, -explan right? You can do like question mark equals something that would be look ahead. So check if there is something and if it is, match it. Um, look behind, kind of the same way, just the the the, the other way. Uh, also negative look ahead. So don't match that if that is there and the other way. Okay. So if we use this thing for something really, really kind of simple, right? We have uh, a list of people with emails, and you want to match uh, their emails and delete them. Kind of stupid case, but just basically to show you the matching and everything. So you do something like this. There will be like a string. Uh, there should be something with, it, with those, uh, 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 what do you call those? Uh, the, the angular brackets. And then there will be uh, dots anything as many times as you want at the end of the line, right? And then you replace it with nothing. So, well, they should disappear, right? And they do. Cool, okay, fine. Uh, what, we, what if we want to actually generate those emails again, back? And we know that, well, it's usually first name dot last name at company.com. And then we use um, back referencing those are pretty cool because you basically say you find something space something else right uh, and uh, then you use back references which is backslash one and backslash two uh, and then you put them together so you say like replace with name space last name space uh, angular bracket name dot last name at company.com and another bracket, right? And it works, almost. Because one of those guys, they don't have two name, last name, first first name, last name kind of thing, and it doesn't work. On, on uh, Also, just, just to show you that it's not always working, but it will work most of the ca cases. But then if you want to work for all of them, you have to do some something, right? You have to do some corner cases and put some more logic into regular expressions. Okay. So if we try to, if you have like um, some kind of text, right? Some kind of letters, whatever. Um, in, 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 in HTML, it will be like this. Uh, and if we do regular expression that like you have those brackets and there should be like at least one character in there. Okay, how, would it, how it will look like? Well, it will look like this. So it will actually match the whole thing. Instead of matching just one tag, it will match actually everything. And that happens because of something that we haven't talked about yet. It's uh, greed, right? Um, to, to counteract greed, we can use a question mark for yet another thing, right? We can do something like this. We can say like, hey, you know what? You don't have to go all the way till the end and see if you get a match and eat the whole thing. You can actually stop first time you hit onto that pattern. What will happen here is actually what will actually match the only one tag. And then if you press next or something or match the next one, it will match the next tag because you see it's blue. So it will actually match both of them. Okay. Uh, so th that is being done by adding question mark and making the uh, regular expression non-greedy. So the greed is on by default. It will eat everything it can and see if it can match the whole thing. But if you put on that question mark, it will try to look for the first possible match. That being said, is important to notice, I mean, I told you that I will show you some things not to do with a regular expression. So matching HTML tags is not one of them. I mean, it is one of them. Negation is a kind of confusing thing. Do not match HTML tags or any XML tags with regular expressions. Because uh, things will happen. How many of you have seen that on Stack Overflow? Okay, one hand. Perfect. 
Uh, the rest of you, you're in for a surprise. Uh, basically, a kind of harmless question, right? This guy was like, hey, you know what, I want to parse stuff, like HTML stuff, and uh, can, can you help me with the regular expression? And then this is the answer. Um, I don't know if you have time to read the whole thing, uh, but the, 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 the answer in s like gets like kind of reasonable in the beginning, but after a while it gets like, unholy child whips the blood of virgins and Russian hackers pawn your web app and so on. And then it gets really weird here. And uh, this is the moderator's note at the, uh, actually at, at, at Stack Overflow saying, you know what, actually th th there is nothing wrong with the encoding. Stop reporting it as a bug to us. This is actually shown as it was intended to. And in case you uh, want to actually see it for yourself, this is the link to that question. It's one of the most voted, best voted questions and answer, actually answers in, uh, in, 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 in the history of Stack Overflow. With back then, it was like 4,400. I guess it's more upvotes now, uh, if you can still vote on that thing. But yeah. Things like this will happen to you if you um, try to do matching with HTML. So don't do that. All right. So quantifiers. We have greedy ones that are by default. You have uh, the star, the plus, uh, the optional one, and then you have number, number. And actually, the funny thing, if you want to have a non-greedy optional one, it will be question mark, question mark. Right? Again, same character having different roles. Easy, easy to forget. Yeah, non-greedy ones would be just adding a question mark at the end. And so th those two question marks, actually one of them is optional uh, operator and the other one is actually the greedy one, uh, greedy switch. All right. So the final recap. Um, I have some more examples, don't worry. Uh, the first thing to remember is that know your data. You should know what you want to match, and you should also know what not to match. This is very, very important. The second one is probably even more important, because it's very easy for you to check if those things that you actually want to match are actually being matched. But the other one is a bit more tricky. Sometimes you just forget things. Sometimes you don't really have enough test data to do that. Um, if you would have had just one tag you would match and you wouldn't even think of it's greedy and then you put it on the whole HTML page and it kind of crashes, right? But we kind of figured out that we should not use it for HTML anyway, so we're not going to do that, right? What you should also know is that you should know your flavor of regular expressions uh, and the engines. There are like two different engines. They are like DFA engine uh, and there is NFA engine. Uh, different uh, language implementations, they do it in different way and this they, there is a simple test which is like I think um, very few characters long test that uh, hangs horribly and just if you've never heard the fan on your laptop because I mean you usually now they're not that noisy run on that thing with the incorrect engine you'll hear it in a second and your everything halts because it kind of starts jumping back and forth and doing all this backwards and for forwards look arounds and everything and everything crashes and in the other engine it would work perfectly fine um, so um, so the thing is with NFA engine it looks like it's uh, it looks at the regex and tries to match the text so it's regex directed and the other one DFA engine would be actually text directed so it looks at the text and tries to match the regular expression which is different right so um, also try to use anchors so yeah well this is the the backtracking this is the backtracking i was talking about the jump jumping back and forth and also you should also use try to use those ankles uh, anger, uh, anchors as much as you want uh, as much as you can because it will make the uh, matching much easier so greediness another thing to think about do you want a greedy algorithm you want non greedy algorithm uh, try to turn off the uh, Parentheses, like if you use a lot of parentheses just to group things, try to turn off the naming and everything because then there will be non-capturing uh, parentheses. They, that means they will not store all those groups in 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 in, in the memory 
because otherwise it stores the groups in the memory, it builds up a list of those, and then you can refer to them, like the first group, second group, and so on, and you can even sometimes give names to those groups. Yeah, anchors, we talked about that already, so anchors, by anchors I mean something uh, telling that's the beginning of the line or end of the line. And um, let's look at more examples, okay? IP, matching an IP. We kind of tried to do that, but we already agreed that it does not have enough logic, right? So um, the first idea would be like, how do you want to uh, match an IP? Oh, well, there are some numbers, dots, some numbers, dots, some numbers, dots, some numbers. And then it's like beginning of the line, end of the line. You can add those if you want, but that doesn't matter, right? <sighs> um, well, no, okay? Well, this was kind of obvious, right? The only thing it dis doesn't match is the number uh, letters instead of numbers. Okay, cool. Um, another idea. Okay, let's let's because we we matched some weird stuff. We matched more numbers than it's supposed to, and there so on, so on, so on. Right? Okay. Let's say something like this. There will be three digits: digit, 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 dot, digit, 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 dot, and so on. Right? Mm, it actually matched the one that is not an IP. The only one that is not an IP. Also doesn't work, right? That kind of sucks. Okay, uh, third idea. It should be like one, at least one or three. We're getting closer, right? That should work. No? Good. Why? Exactly, it ranges, right? So it will, it will kind of, you will get closer, right? You know you're matching something that kind of <sighs> looks like an IP, but we have no logic in there. And then the third, uh, the fourth one, that is actually to match all of them. Um, actually, I separated that one li into several lines, so we'll see about that. So you have start of the line, right? You have that, just to match the first number. Uh, you have that again, <laughs> again, and you're done. Well, of course, you could have done it with like dots and re back re reference and say four times or something like that. But just for simpl simplification's sake, I did it like this. So now we're actually putting a lot of logic in this thing. So basically, you're saying f we'll start with the well, beginning of the line, that's fine. And then we'll go into. Um, a group, it should be 0 or 9, uh, 0, 1, sorry, maybe. Then there should be a digit, at least one digit for sure. Then there will be maybe another digit, or we'll start with 2. Because, I mean, if we start with 0 or 1, there will be one thing. And if it starts with 2, we cannot go over uh, anything that is like 0. Uh, we cannot go anything that is above uh, 4. Well, we have five there, don't worry. Uh, and then there will be another digit. And then we have this special, special, special corner case of 255. Two five. And now you're actually putting a lot of logic in there, and you can do that, but it takes a lot of energy and resources. And matching something very simple, like an IP, gets like this, right? And then, well, you add some end of the line and stuff like that, and then it will actually match the right. IP number. <sighs> okay, that's cool. Um, you remember email thing I, I, I was talking about, like trying to write email, uh, regex for matching email? Uh, tr that's another thing you should not do. Uh, one, w for one reason, is that it's already done. It's like there. Uh, this is a regex, a regex based address validation in Perl with the regular expression like this. This is not the whole thing. It goes in down there. Um, and it's supposed to catch all the possible, uh, all the possible uh, possi uh, possibilities of the emails and stuff like that. So if you want to visualize that email uh, thing, is that this, this part is kind of this what you see there. And there is another one. And tense here, so it's like just 82 lines, so it's cool, right? And when you put that thing into uh, a regexpert, 
So you, you paste that thing. This is the one that drawing the, 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 the train tracks and stuff, right? You paste that thing in. You click on display. Uh, the line, the progress bar appears. I didn't know that there, there is a progress bar there, actually, until then. Because usually it goes like this, right? Uh, there is actually a progress bar there. Cool. And then <coughs> you get that after some time. And then you just like, OK, continue, continue. I'm, I'm good. I, I know what I'm doing. And then it's kind of choose everything and gives you this, except for um, this is a just a little piece. <laughs> the one you saw was there, right? So this is the email validation. And do you want to write that? No? Yeah? OK. Anyone? OK, I hope you OK, he was taking pictures, so it's good. Uh, <coughs> so basically, there are some things that we should do with regular expressions, but there are also some things that we should not. And things might seem way, way too easy and simple in the beginning, but at, at the end, there will be like, wow, this is, this is that. So you see what happened, why it happened in the beginning, it was like, OK, return true because of this, because there are so many weird corner cases do you want to match and you want not to match and so on, right? Fun. So I kind of gave you a very short, 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 I mean, it's a lot of things to talk about in regular expressions. There is a lot of things that you uh, can emphasize on and so on. So I kind of decided to give you a bit more uh, basic kind of thing to, to give you an introduction to make you your kind of toolbox uh, full with a little bit of basic stuff that you actually next time is able to raise your hand and say, you know what, I can do some basic kind of simple things I'm actually able to, uh, to do on, on, on my own. So I kind of hope that this gets a bit more like your reality, but again, try not to use it for everything. It's not like solution for the universe and the whole thing and you know all that things. This is all I have. This is my email. This is my Twitter. Tweet, send me emails, and we have probably around five minutes now uh, to for some questions and comments or anything like that. Any thoughts, comments, questions, anything that you might want to uh, to share with the others? Yeah, just a second. I'll, I'll, uh, there should be a mic somewhere. No, there's no mic. Okay, you repeat. Uh, you you ask the question. I'll repeat them, and then. Yes. Okay. So the question is about the performance and to see how how it actually is with performance, especially like with multi-threads things and big data. Not big data as a concept, but data that is big. Uh, so this kind of thing. So well, the thing is that that's what I was telling you. I mean, you have to be a little bit smart to know what kind of engine you're using and what kind of flavor you're using of that regular expression, and they will react in different way to different things. I, and for like different uh, different languages, there will be like a little bit different implementations. So you have to check on those things, and you also should be. Uh, I think the a lot is done if you try to uh, if you will try to uh, limit the search as much as possible, so you don't match everything, and then you kind of filter from there. But what you also can do, which is maybe a bit more easy than doing something like this might be doing it step by step. And that might be also kind of easier. So, so you just take a huge amount of text and you kind of cut it down to something smaller and then you cut it down to something smaller. It looks, it doesn't look as beautiful as this. Well, you have to agree, it looks beautiful, right? Uh, complicated, but beautiful. But still, it will be easier to maintain, it will be easier to, to debug, and it will be easier to do things. You might, might lose some performance there, but still. Yes. If I, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, yes. Uh, okay. So the question is, uh, if if it's possible to add a uh, logic to uh, replacements, and for example, in the exa uh, the example that I showed with uh, first name, last name, if there is no name, no last name, so I should do something. For example, just drop it or anything. And the the answer is yes. I mean, it's very. E it should be quite easy to do. It's basically that like uh, we added logic t uh, in. Um in uh, the IP example. So you just basically have to say, well, if there is no name, then you should be match something else. If there is no... Yeah, yeah, it's without Java code. This is without Java code, uh, this thing. But it still adds logic. Yeah, yeah, but it will be the same. It's basically you also have to write a smarter regular expression instead of, if we go back to... It's it has to be smarter. No, it's actually it doesn't have to be smarter replacement. It has to be smarter uh, matching. So it should not match. It should match. It should match this one as well. So the logic would be here, not up here. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But what you could do is actually you could put. Uh, you can create a. S uh, you can put something like. Uh, saying that, uh, I, I think you should be able to do that. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it, it's impossible. But what you can do here is actually to put some logic into that thing, so it will put up a group. Uh, will there will be always a second group? You can probably do that. You can, for example, say you should match. If there is a, but I mean, if you put, if you if you turn around the question the other way around and look at it from the other side, instead of saying I want to handle the case where there is no last name, you can think like how can I do this uh, regex thing so it will match both this and that. So you just have to rewrite the the first query that will give you the right answer, and then you have to do some uh, maybe some more logic on the on the replacement, but. Try to look at it at a different angle, basically. Um, another, another questions? Uh, just a second. I'll go back to this. Anyone? No. Thank you.